can we say that an experience of the void is also just another experience? A bit devoid of objects would be grateful if you can clarify. Yes, the experience of the void will be an experience. If you cannot experience the void, then there will be an imagination of the void and that imag imagination will be an experience. Some people like to imagine the experiencer as space, nothingness, but that is wrong. The experiencer cannot be even imagined. It's not possible. There is no image of it. It is not even void. It is so much nothing. It is so empty that it is not even a void. If a void appears in front of you, it is some kind of experience. Second question is when experience, local memories and non-substantiality, how are they all related to each other? Well, our experience is one experience which is of something which is non-substantial, non-local, non-temporal. We call it the memory, non-physical, non-mental. And uh, it looks like that uh, in this form that we are currently, it is possible to have a localized experience of a small part of this whole experience. This is the relation. Why is there this uh, local memory and local experience, uh, limited experience? It is, uh, according to my view, it is just a stage in the evolution. This will be kind of, these limitations are going away and then finally we'll be able to have bigger and bigger experiences. And finally there will be complete dissolution in the whole of the memory. But uh, those experiences, as they become bigger, they are less meaningful and less, there is less to learn from them. So there, there's another reason that we are having a limited experience that is to have more meaning, more stability, more learning. And the more gross form we take, the more limited the experiences become, the more limited the senses become. Third question says that, can the experiencer shift between the different localized memories and experiences while remembering or giving prominence to one particular localized experience and memory? Well, here it looks like you got confused about the entity and the experiencer. Remember, the experiencer is unchanging. There is no question of shifting of any kind there. It does not shift. And remember the experiencer is infinite. There is only one experiencer. It is already experiencing all the local memories and all the universal memory and everything there is to experience. So here in the question number three, there is a drop in your awareness. You kind of relapsed into ignorance. When you write all these questions, you should keep the awareness on. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very uh, meaningless question like this one. You see, if there is a... Okay, he's saying, <laughs> can you be another while remembering who you, are, who you were? I'm already another. I'm already this one. I'm already that one. I'm already you and I'm already everyone. See, these questions are coming from some kind of darkness that you are experiencing now. Go back, drop the identification with what you are experiencing to that which is experiencing. You can do it right now also. Drop the identification with the experience, the local experience and uh, you know you can identify with the experience or you simply remove it that there is no I there. And now you will see that I am everyone and uh, this darkness can be removed. Come back into awareness, finding it hard to understand the section change is memory. And more generally, how is it that all experiences are of changes in memory, including the experiences of senses? It is very easy. If nothing changed, nothing will be experienced. The senses are reacting to change. If nothing changed, they will react to nothing. And all we get is an experience of the change. This is our direct experience. There is nothing in our experience which is not changing. Now, when you say that all experience is of the memory, we can immediately see that it, the changes are happening in the memory. The memory is not a static memory. This non-physical, non-mental uh, memory is not a static thing that everything is imprinted on it like a book and then nothing happens there. No, it is vibration. Most basically, the basic form of the memory is a vibration and it is changing. Some of the vibrations, they arrange into patterns and they stick for a while 
when they stick for a while we call it memory like they have been memorized for a while because there is no substance here all we have is vibrations vibrations of the existence it is easy to understand that uh, all the Hello, I, yeah yeah yes just want to come back on what you made so what i was trying to get at is my understanding from going through that video was that was that you're saying that senses are in memory and but if you look at say for example people that have lost their memories um they don't they can't remember anything but those people if you for example engage their senses whether you shout at them with their hearing or touch them then in those instances you know those they become aware of that so if the senses were in memory that wouldn't be the case okay so it looks like there is a confusion between the events that happen in our life which are which go in the memory and the fundamental structure of the manifestation which is the universal memory because we are using the same word here so for that uh, there is a solution that whatever happens in our lives whatever the uh, events that are happening in our life they are stored in one of the layers of the memory and when we recall these things we are using only that layer of the memory to play back those memories like i am looking at the objects and it is coming through the senses and that experience is coming through the senses and uh, the experience of the objects we say is the lowest layer is the layer of the physical world the lowest layer of the memory similarly i can sense this body through many senses the heat and cold and uh, weight of the body and all this you know without these five senses also i know there is a body and that is that information is coming from the layer of the body which is a layer in the memory it is an arrangement of structures in the memory that is being recalled here or that is being sensed here by the senses similarly when i think about thoughts and desires and emotions they are coming from other layers in the structure these are vibrating patterns and they are the memory now what about the events that happen in your life they are stored in another layer and we call it the layer of the intellect there we are able to play back these memories there is another layer which is the layer of the causal body from where we are able to get our dreams when the, that layer plays back or when the activity happens there we see it as dreams in the daytime the layer of the causal body is also active and it is sending the desires and um, preferences down this other structures when you say what happens when somebody loses the memory no nobody loses the memory there is nobody here there are only these layers in the memory that's all there is nobody nobody loses the memory nobody is farming the memories these memories are not my memory memories and those memories are not your memories there is no person keep this in mind all the time now we are completely in the illusion when i talk about the illusion talk about the experience we talk about the illusion in the illusion there is no person so there are no personal memories they go nowhere what happens is because of a fault in the nervous system or because of a fault in one of the layers the recall stops the memories don't go anywhere memories are where they were before and when this fault is rectified like surgery is done or the medicines work they get back their memory you know sometimes it happens sometimes we think that we have forgotten everything but uh, when we see a toy or we we eat something which we ate in the childhood and everything floods back all the memories that we thought were forgotten they come back it is possible to recall you know any of your lives like this they come back the memories are never destroyed you see why because they are not physical they are non physical everything is stored i mean these memories should not be confused with the episodic memories that we recall in the waking state it is a mental activity that we call it a memory because yes it is a memory the experiences are getting stored there in the form of knowledge and uh, all the events but uh, that is just one layer that is just tiny portion of the whole universal memory so we have so many things in the universal memory there is the entire world entire universe there are people there are bodies there is this body there is a nervous system there are various layers in this nervous system and this mind of the individual 
and there are higher layers in the in universal memory that are not individual this is all illusion this is all constructed out of possibilities in the vibrations of this uh, existence it is all probable it is all virtual it is all non existent we should start from this base and then everything will be cleared what have you assumed is that there is a person and the person has personal memories and there is, that is the only meaning of the memory that can come and go like when i stop recalling the memory is gone when i recall the memory is here no that is an activity in the mind memory is something which is very very fundamental it is not that i recall my phone number or what was written in that book this book no that is an activity in, in the mind in the layer of the intellect and it is very unreliable the person dies everything is gone you see there is nobody there to get it back so what happened to all those experiences from where they came to where they went that is a question that this tiny person won't understand right now that is why you are a spiritual seeker you want to know and there are ways to know